Hi! So it's time for the um, number two on question and answer. I have a new camera so I hope the sound is good because the last one it was really... Pfft. yeah. Mm. So I need the questions and I have them on my computer. Is it bad to train if you have the BMI under 15? Yeah. Because, um, okay, the BMI is really... You can't follow it that for sure, but it doesn't show how many muscles or how the fat in your body is. So, for example, um, you can have a really high BMI but still be healthy. I think that you should have some doctor or... I had a person at my eating disorder clinic that Take, took care of this and follow my like normal weight, what I weight before my eating disorder and what I weight now and what the weight should be when I get can start training or any do any daily activities. I was so underweight so I needed to sit all the time. All my activities were limited and uh, they counted every step so uh, I was really dangerously underweight. And my pulse, it was uh, like under 29, so I was I was seriously sick. Probably had stayed in hospital, but uh, it only got me worse, so oh, thank god I found the real help. If you're on recovery, the most important thing is that you have the mental, uh, the head should be recovered, and you're free from your eating disorder, and you have no like, anxiety or need to train all the time, need to count your calories. Now all these questions that you are asking, the points on that you still need to control and you still want to know everything about how much to train, how much to eat, how much you should do the things. And I think recovery is to, to leave all those things uh, back. And when you have that time in your life and the period that you're, you're just free, you just live and enjoy life. You need that time, you needed that and I had it for a couple years. And yeah, I've always been really into sports so it didn't last long so I started to like miss my soccer team. So of course I wanted to play soccer again. My BMI needed to be before I gotta start the training. Of course, then I needed to eat much more because I burned it more and it was really difficult to gain weight and at the same time run all the time in the soccer. I managed it and it took a bit longer but I did it because the soccer was so important for me to be with my friends. So, no, not under 15 but um, how did you become a model? I started when I was 14, 15. Before that I had no interest of that. I was so completely different. I was shy. I was ashamed of myself. And But after my eating disorder I just wanted to live and do all the things that came into in me. But before that I was like, my mom wanted me for some fashion beauty competition I was no never that's so silly like princess things and I was so no princess it's so weird because I have competed in so many beauty competitions after that but just for fun I for example Miss Model of the World uh, 2013 so I had no idea what the competition was but agency asked if I want to join it was like one month before the final everybody else had Peter for that to get in the final. I just came there, okay? <laughs> so it was so weird. And I just won the competition. And I was so young and I don't know, it was so silly. I shouldn't maybe not have won that competition because I couldn't take that prize. I just couldn't. Even if everybody said to me, you need to, you need to take it, you need to go to China and compete. But but I just couldn't because before that I had been in Tokyo for model jobs and because it was a really hard time 
I understood why I don't want to work as a model. But I believe that not every model jobs and not every model trips are like that. It was my experience and I was really young. I had no experience about model jobs in the world. I just had worked in the Finland, uh, Sweden and like people that took care of you and then suddenly I was uh, alone in the world and just left with no no help and no no idea of anything. Even if I could speak really good English so nobody else could. Yeah, and I had anorexia for, for that so suddenly you need to everybody's just looking at your body saying that you need to lose weight, stuff like that, saying that your, your tie is too big, you need to change yourself. That was like the, the hardest th thing for me just to melt. I had worked so much to just accept myself, just work my, my worth up again, just accept myself and my body as it is. It was a breakdown for me for a couple of years and after that I had a real bad time as I said, everything happened, it's a long story. My best friend did suicide and stuff like that, but I managed it. What happened? I started weightlifting and yeah, the gym saved me, thank god. I started mother work when, just for fun for my sister uh, collection. She was a designer, or she is. She designed clothes and worked for fashion. I was modeling, I was pretty tall, I liked it. I liked to be in front of the camera and after that it continued. I got emails and calls from everywhere. But I never had a dream to just be a model. I like to be in front of the camera but maybe not a typical model. I, I like the fun jobs and that's maybe why I I don't never be a professional model, uh, live for that, because that's not what I want. I wanna be free, I wanna just do the model jobs that is fun and take the healthy, take care of the models. And the biggest mistake in recovery of anorexia, I don't think there was no mistake, because every mistake throw me up, every mistake learned me something, every mistake made me stronger. That was a part of my recovery. Oh, looks the future for you. I have a lot of plans, but I hate to plan. I just live the day as it comes and take every minute at a time. I love to enjoy every day. I love to just live. I'm in the fitness model competition now. It ends on the fall. It will be so... What's the favorite food or any typical food you can't live without. I was directly going to say peanut butter, but actually when I ha don't have it at home, I don't grab it. But when I have it, it's like, woo! Did I even buy it? It's gone in a minute. Is it just me or is it everybody? Peanut butter is a hard thing to have in, in the fridge closet. C closet? Anyway, peanut butter is one thing. Uh, one thing I can't live without. Wine? I say red wine. Yeah, I can't live without it. She can't. I look like a chicken myself because I eat so much chicken, but it's one thing I could live on. Or beef. I love uh, beef and meat, but I don't want to talk about it because it, there is so much. John's animal lovers and I'm, I'm myself. And let's just leave that. Coffee. And uh, well, I can't live without it. I think every food would be hard for me to live without. Addiction. Why can't I just be some addiction? <gasps> My everyday evening meal. Mm. It's fluff, it's protein fluff. Maybe the only thing that gets me full, you know? That you can't eat anymore. It's full in English, I don't know. I think I have the re recipe in the blog. Get the question, how do you do it? How do you get it so fluffy? Well, I'm the fluff expert. <laughs> I will do a video blog with the recipe. And I have it here, but it's really bad quality, so I will do a better one. Just prepare. Stay tuned. I think pretty tired, but I promise to do this video blog and I will do it. I'm a scorpion. One question actually was, what's your horoscope? What's I'm a scorpion. I often get, what? You don't look like a scorpion or you, you're not the type. 
Well, you don't know anything about Scorpius or me then, because... I'm really that kind of person when you read about it. I'm interested about astrology. I'm a Scorpio for sure, yeah, I am. Um, really have a confidence, mysterious adventures they don't trust everybody and they have a lot of feelings they don't show them always when they find the, the person that they trust then they will show it sometimes they just explode and sometimes really good to hold them in then scorpios are really strong when we decide something we don't give up they, they can say in fluff every 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 evening and it gets really fluffy and really big if you don't have a big stomach you can put it in the freezer or share it that i don't never do so if you wait to come here and don't come because i don't share food maybe if somebody's nice or share back okay TV series I like. I always watched Salatut Elamet. It's a Finnish TV series and <laughs> it's really funny. It has become pretty scary now. Then the girls, I love it because they're so normal. There is no fake. There is no so much makeup and perfect friends, perfect relationship, perfect bodies. They're just natural. And Kins was. One of my favorites when I was a teenager. I liked to party and drink a lot of alcohol and just party when I was young. And that cereal just fit, fit me then. I think you always search after the series and the books and blogs you want to read about. Feel yourself in. pre some break, it's really my when I watch TV or series or movies. I just want something to rinse my brain. <laughs> Relax and something easy to look at. How do you train now? I train bicep. Okay, right now, I don't train any serious. For this, I did it. I trained uh, no cardio four, five, six times a week. Heavy lifting, five sets, no reps, three to five. That worked for me really good because before that, I had the bikini fitness programs, kickback, high repetitions, hip thrusters, machines, not so much bench press, heavy lifting, power lifting. It was good to change a bit. Know that I can't just do the max, no repetitions all the time. So I have done a recovery months. Now. Higher repetitions, lower weight, have a lot of work and haven't slept as I'm used to. Because when I train hard, then I need to sleep and eat, rest really, really, really good. Because otherwise I don't get results. And because when you train, you need to have energy, you need to have power. Why go there if you're really weak or weak at all, tired? I go there you just break down your muscles you want to build it up i want to be strong and i want to be energy i said when i'm at the gym and and that's the best feeling when you, you go in there and you start lifting just <sighs> it's the best thing i have i don't know what it is but it makes me who knows maybe after 10 years i have something else who cares i enjoy this and i will continue i filmed for 30 minutes now what do you think about comments how do you react i'm not so sensitive i that comments on online i'm the person that knows myself best it don't matter what anybody says or thinks or good comments then well it makes me really happy. It lights up my day. It warms my heart that I could help someone or somebody thinks that I'm in. I can inspire. It's like, what? When I started blogging, I just started for myself. And to hear that it, I have changed someone's life, it's incredible. I have no words. About the neg negativity, uh, the comments, some of them you can learn of. Makes me you think and you do mistakes. Nobody's perfect. How does your family think 
about your eating disorder now i think they have continued their lives and everybody just moved on and they're really happy that i i'm happy and it's really fun to see that nobody still lives in that disaster and activity that i gave the family and affected everyone it's so good to see that we can talk about it and continue our lives and can share our thoughts about everything could you tell your macros when you were gaining weight with weight training a couple years ago i have about six kilograms to normal bmi and i also need to eat over 3000 calories to gain weight i'm wondering if it's better to keep fat high and uh, carbs lower it help the hormone production or is it better to eat the normal when building muscles? I think this is from person to person, like I said before. You can't say that one thing will help everybody. answer on the question is that I didn't count my macros. I don't know how much I ate. I just ate everything I liked and I gained weight. And I gained muscle and fat and 10 kilograms. It went fast. And I think if you if you count your macros, it's not good for your mental or... Like why? Why do you count your macros? You're not competing in any competition. It just messes everything up. Creation goes, the motivation goes. Yeah, I know it's important if you really want to gain weight or lose weight to track your macros so you get enough. At the same time, just eat and follow the weight. If you don't go up, then you eat too little. You just need to eat more. Like add anything. Fat. Fat had, has a lot of calories, so it's easy to eat that. And, but if you want to build muscle, eat more protein. But if it fills you up too much, protein drinks is really good. Just anything. It don't matter so much if you want to gain weight. What you eat. If you just eat more than you burn. If your goal is to just build muscle and no fat. Then it's maybe more important to, to check what you eat. But now when your BMI is under uh, normal and healthy, you shouldn't track your macros. You need to be healthy before you can they start to watch all of us and count the macros. So I my tip is to leave that and eat more than you you're used to. Make a meal diary while you're eating now. Look what you can add. It's pretty easy when you just make it normal and just don't do it to a big thing. I know you wanna gain fast, but even in yourself, any time, you, you will make it if you believe in yourself and work hard enough. Don't be afraid to eat everything. You don't need to be all healthy things. Anyway, my camera memory is out, so bye. See you on next video blog.